It's new. Welcome back to the It's New program, whatever you want to call it. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Awesome. Um, yeah, today is Google I.O. Hopefully you guys caught the news. Pretty cool stuff there, but we have a lot to discuss today. Um, Crystal, what are you going to talk about? I want to talk about de-indexing. Cool. And Greg? We've got an old-fashioned patty off between ChatGPT and Google. Awesome. And I'm going to cover um, some stuff around Google's old comments six months ago around buckle up and then some more feedback from Google about reading your feedback. And also maybe the Google automated action viewer will come. We'll get into that a little bit more in detail. And of course, we're recording this before Google I.O. So there's a lot of Google I.O. news that you probably saw already. We'll cover that hopefully tomorrow. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe and like and all that other fun stuff that you do on YouTube. <music> All right, so by now, you know um, everything that came out at Google I.O. But before that, ChatGPT had a big announcement that they planned quite pettily, I, I would say, 24 hours before Google I.O. And they had a big demo. It seems like Google got wind of what was going on with this demo and some of the like live video reads. So it was right before their demo um, at, at about noon uh, Eastern, Google put out a preview of their IO, what will be coming at IO, which is the exact same sort of video technology, what's happening here type um, solutions. And they put it out on X. And I don't know if that was an actual live demo of it. It, so, it looked like it, but we know in the past that some of those demos have not been fully like live and, and had some assistance on there. Um, but I had seen the Google one first and I thought, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, I would say it was, uh, you know, had sort of a, 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 what I assume is a woman's voice and was a little bit robotic, but taking a look at what was up on the IO screen and, and trying to describe what was going on and trying to start a little bit of a conversation. And then when chat GPT, re, uh, announced their news, they blew it away. I gotta say, I mean, those demos were incredible but i i so hey i love the fact that chat gpt did it 24 hours ahead of time and then google tries to spoil it but they just are so bad at these announcements somehow because the chat gpt um demo i mean they're taking live questions from like taco burrito 69 or something <laughs> they're looking at this like question and they're and they're going live with it um and man that is a lot smoother smoother product it it I am like, they have to be shaking about IO and, and what they're going to do today, which again, you, you've already seen at this point. But I, I was like worried for the chat GPT one because they were like, what, what is my face? Like, how am I feeling? And what, what is my mood? And then accidentally it was like, oh, you look like a wooden board. And I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, he's like, oh, no, no, that was the table from the picture before. Take a look now. And it's like going back and forth and laughing with him. He's like, she's in the, the GPT is like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, you look like you're pretty happy. I mean, man, that was like a slick demo and Google might was, be in a world of pain at IO. I was, I was literally blown away. It, this is like, this is so close to what we think the future of AI is. And it's scary, but so, so cool. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to it. It's a really exciting thing. I do agree that whole, thing with open ai microsoft did the same thing remember like microsoft had their big announcement they um back with the whatever and google's like oh we're gonna have to beat them to it so google like did it the day before back when they announced um not sge but they announced uh bard when they announced gemini so it's just like they're all doing this and i don't think they need to i think they just could be like apple and be like we're just gonna do it better at some point in the future and we'll just wait um yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's just funny and i don't think it does, does anybody benefit it's, it's funny to watch it's just amazing the personality it's like oh we have an announcement today like oh what's this talking to like the uh gpt 4 oh and it was like what's that and then she's like responding to the, the assistant the chat gpt or open ai assistants talking back and saying what's the announcement well the guy's like now who's about you and she got all flattered it was just the, the personality in this assistant is just insane taken to the next level um, yeah looking forward to this and the kids are going to just you know love it for homework so yeah i i just love that that was a that was a totally live demo that was totally, yeah. uh, that was a hundred percent live. And what do you do if you're Google, you know, and, and I O today and you've got an inferior product. 
What, what, how are you? You must be feeling feeling like fly in. Tough. And what, didn't uh, Sergi Pen once fly into IO and in, like uh, some type of like hang glider with his like <laughs> blades shoes? That's what you need to do. That will make it up. I think Sergi needs to fly in on his rollerblade shoes, maybe on his like car that turns into a, a plane type of solution. We'll see. But I'm looking forward to watching that. Yeah, Crystal, what's up? The market seems really interested in it. I'm looking at it on YouTube and it's number two on trending. So it's it streamed 20 hours ago at time of filming and it's already had almost 2 million views. So people are really interested in this um, and really want to, are really fascinated to see it, to see how it develops. So um, hopefully hopefully we'll see something uh, comparable from, from Google. Um, Greg, are you thinking they're, they're going to have something as good or? No, it's. I mean, they showed a preview of it, and it's not as good. And, and we can kind of end on this. I th I think that that Chat G GPT and, and OpenAI, they they have it there in the lead. I mean, when they say um, Sora, uh, the, the video product, I mean, people were going wild. When right. with this, people are going wild. I I don't know how you try to keep up, Barry. To your point, that's a, a great point. For sure, it, it's just everything they announced is just wow. Like when they initiated Chat GPT, the video thing. It's just next level, and you're right. I think it's funny because it's all based off the, the T and the GPT. It's all based off of Google's technology. It's just it's just even funnier. So, <laughs> any event, uh, Crystal, let's talk about the indexing. Yeah, so um, we published uh, on or sorry on Search Engine Roundtable um, recently published that Google has confirmed the de-indexing of vast vast uh, amounts of URLs in February 2024. A lot of people were talking about this, were saying that they were seeing this, um, and I think it's interesting to see this to see that they've confirmed this. Um, and this this was this was some information that came out from a video that was posted from a from a conference. Um, and it essentially said, Gary Elish um, says, you know, since February, we were where suddenly we just decided that we are de indexing a vast amount of URLs on a site because of perception and our perception of these sites has changed. So this is this is something that is confirming uh, what a lot of people are seeing. And we've seen so much, so much change in the last few months across all of these different um, updates and all of these different actions and things like that. It's just good to have things confirmed because there's been so much that's been unconfirmed. And so, you know, I don't know if anyone's keeping a list of what has and hasn't been confirmed, but this is a great one to just have confirmed. For sure. And, and he specifically mentioned like the uh, crawl but not index uh, uh, error or warning you get in Google Search Console. And he said the reason a lot of people saw that in February was because of this, where Google said, you know, you're just not meeting the bar in terms of what we want to what we want to crawl and index. And because of that, um, we're going to make me crawl them and we decided not to index it. And that might mean that the quality is not up to par for us to actually fully index that. It doesn't mean it's the case. The vast majority of those crawl but not index have to do with technical issues with your website yeah. and not to do with quality. But at the same time, if you saw a spike around February, it might be related to that. And I'm glad that Gary confirmed that um, at the server conference back in mid-April. We just finally got the video from them. Yeah. I think it, I think it's useful useful to have any any information on on the indexing things because sometimes people people get really stuck on that. Um, so it's great to have more insights. Talking about stuff that Google said in the past um, six months ago, almost six months ago today. I think it's six months of one day. Danny Sullivan, the search liaison of Google, said buckle up. Or he said don't buckle up, but he said buckle up. And if you're doing stuff that um, you shouldn't be doing, um, that kind of content will kind of disappear from the Google index and you'll start seeing better rankings and so forth. We have a lot of changes coming in. Andy Simpson actually posted the audio file that he recorded at Brighton SEO from back then six months ago of him saying this. And it's just fun to look back at this. I know Greg, you were in the in the stands there cheering along and saying, go Danny, go Danny. And you took your seatbelt and you buckled up and then you sat there for six months buckled up waiting for something to change. And then what happened? Well, Danny is an entertainer when he's up yeah. there. I mean, Danny is the best ever, you know, at, at this in search. And he wasn't making that statement to say buck up. He was just going and being Danny. And then, you know, it's just that one sound bite got there. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously there were big changes coming and he didn't mean to be like, Hey, just get like, it's right around the corner or anything like that. But I mean, they're obviously look, I mean, look at everything that's rolling out, you know, look at all the, the, the coupons gone, everything like that. Like, um, but I didn't think he meant that intentionally, Barry, you were there. You, did you think that I was, not well, you there. weren't there, you weren't there. I was yeah. there. No. So I was, I, there, I was there and I think. I think he was generally trying to give like general information of people to sort of stop thinking that they can do one little trick 
and that will that will solve their SEO problems like that, you know, that that it's more of a holistic approach. And I think that that's kind of what we've seen, like people who who are doing parasite SEO, people are going who are like, oh, if you just take this thing and do that, then you'll you'll rank. Um, you know, he was saying that it should be more holistic. And you know you shouldn't be taking taking literal things and going oh EAT so that means we need author pages that are like this it's like no it's like it's more complex than that it's not just just one thing it's more to it than that yeah and I think that yeah and the big takeaway what he, I mean he was talking about like the normal Google stuff but making it entertaining is is what I got and he's like don't worry about all the stuff Crystal just talked about worry about your users make good content make helpful content. And I actually thought there'd be more of that. Like, right, if you look at Glenn Gabe at Glenn Gabe at X, um, you know, he he went through 360 or 380 or so people that got hit by the HCU. Um, he had like a, a handful that he thought was going to recover. And and Google keeps saying this stuff like, hey, just make helpful, make this good stuff, do do better, work for your, your users. And that's what I thought he was talking about with some of that yeah. buckle up stuff, because that's what the whole whole talk was about. Um, and I think I think some people, you know, maybe maybe we still need to keep those seatbelts on because a lot of people haven't seen what they were expecting from that talk. And, For sure. Um, go ahead. Sorry, I think the other thing is is that I think that you know people are saying we haven't seen anything this big since like Penguin Panda, like that that kind of era or whatever. And I think that it's kind of been a while. Like I've heard as other SEOs say about this that, that they that they've been seeing for the last couple of years that people who are doing like maybe not fully black hat stuff, but like kind of shady stuff, um, just getting away with things. And I think that it was, it's sort of, you know, that buckle up thing is kind of saying, you know, we're, we're making those corrections. <laughs> and if you're doing, if you're doing good content, if you're doing that, that, you know, solid SEO, then you probably don't have to worry. But, um, you know, people who are doing, who are doing questionable. Yeah. Tactics. I do think a lot of people thought that, especially the ones that were those 380 plus sites and probably thousands of websites of people um, that were hit by that helpful content update in September, they were expecting to see, you know what, my content really wasn't that bad. We built great content, our users like it. They were expecting to see reversals with the March core update. They didn't get it. And when this happened, even though Google said this was a 40% now, a 45% reduction in unhelpful content. Yeah, Google did a lot of good, good things according to their data, but now you have this whole HSU, HCU, sorry, um, helpful content update victims that didn't recover and they're all going crazy. We buckled up and we did what we thought we needed to do and nothing happened. And Google's like, well, don't do things for us, do things for your users. And that's the kind of disconnect there. And then Danny Sullivan also wrote last night that we read your feedback. He went through tons and tons of feedback over the past few months, which I'm not sure what, I thought he meant the feedback from the core update, which the form didn't just go live until you know a few weeks ago, not the past few months, but maybe general feedback around the search quality. And because of that, he said, we have more changes to make. Uh, we read some of the things around smaller independent sites that were hit, you know, these are examples, and we're going to make more changes. So he didn't say buckle up again, but he said, we're going to make more changes. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, things will get better. Maybe, maybe not. He's like, I don't control everything. I just hear my job is to give to listen to the feedback and communicate that feedback, but I'm not pressing anything to make the changes. And he, he kind of went off on his daily rants and so forth, and he talked about that in pretty much detail. Um, and one of those feedbacks was, I'm not gonna go through all the details, but one of the things was talking about the, what I've been calling for the past decade, an automated action viewer. So we have a Google search console, you can see manual actions when you get hit by a manual, pen by, by a manual penalty. And I'm like, wouldn't it be great if Google told you if you were hit by an automated algorithmic issue? So if you hit by the Mark Core update, let's say you were hit by the Mark Core update, and these are some things you could do to make things better. Um, if you were hit by the helpful content update, these are, you know, you were hit by that. And, and Google knows, Google, I remember over a decade ago, maybe more, John Mueller was doing his, uh, Google Hangout thingy, and he was looking. People were asking about their site, and he accidentally shared a bookmark later, a bookmark of, to a Google penalty server that he had on his computer, which showed him that that site. He was like investigating a specific site, and he was able to quickly see what algorithms were actually impacting a specific site. So Google knows, um, but Google's all the same time is like saying, you know, if you did that, hey, you know, spammers could use it. Um, they can say, all right, I'm hit by this penalty. Let me make some tweaks. Let me refresh it. I may hit again, and they can do this cycle where it actually is will result in Google's algorithm getting more manipulated. So it's kind of, I don't, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Gabe posted on an X, at Glenn Gabe on X, <laughs> that he doesn't think this will happen, but um, it would be cool if Google figured out a way for this to happen. Wait, 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 Barry, you're saying that SEOs would take a tool that Google gave us and like use it for-, for Only <laughs> if you told them to, Crystal, like you did yesterday. People to do these things. <laughs> So SEOs uh, only do nice things on the internet. I'll get abused. Abused quicker than you could think. For sure. But yeah, I don't know. Right. Hopefully we stay buckled. And if you're out there 
really working on content, you know, that um, you'll be ready for the, uh, I don't know, what are you ready for when you buckle up the crash? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe some more to some come. More speed. I hope, uh, definitely more to come. And I hope you guys enjoyed the IO event. I hear again, there's a secret meeting tonight with some Googlers. Um, hopefully, you guys will be there. Maybe the next core, it will be the May core update. I don't know. Anyway, then, thanks so much. And um, I'll see you guys to, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.